how to really increase the flexibility of your hamstrings. Enjoy the video. Hi guys, welcome to Bob Bully. My name is Dieter and welcome back to the second part of our Stretching is Death series. And I want to show you a better way to increase the flexibility of your hamstrings, which by itself also increases the mobility of the whole hip and increases the health of the hip, lower back, knees, your body. A lot of people suffer from short hamstrings and that has a lot of negative consequences. Why? Now you have to know first that the hamstrings consist out of three muscles. They're connected below the knee and above the hip joint, so they pass two joints, all right? That's the first thing. Now when they are short, when they grow short, what they do is, especially when you lift the leg, they pull the hip in a posterior tilt, which makes that the lower back is not stable anymore, but it's gonna be rounded and your discs are gonna be pushed outwards. And that can uh, lead to pathologies even. Now, um, how can you make that better? In the first part of our Stretching is Dead series, we explained to you guys that a passive stretch, like this one for instance, doesn't really significantly change the length of your muscle. What it does is neurologically, it tells your muscle to release a little bit of tension, which makes that temporary, you can flex, the, the muscle will get a little bit more flexibility, but it's not staying. The next day, you're back to square one. Um, now, there is a better way to increase the flexibility of your hamstrings and therefore also increase the mobility of your hip joint. And that you do by slow eccentrics. So an eccentric effort for your hamstrings, for instance, is a good morning, or even better because it puts less stress on the lower back, a Romanian deadlift as this. Now we'll go over the technique of the Romanian deadlift, but first you have to be able to preserve your neutral spine. Now a neutral spine for everybody is different. Look, I don't have the perfect back. I've got more, it's already better since I'm doing strength training. I had more, but I still have lordosis and kyphosis at the top, all right? By strengthening your muscles around the core, you compensate a little bit and it gets healthier, but I still have lordosis over here. Now there's people that have a more flat lower back, all right? Now, for me, this lower back and upper back is how my vertebra are standing parallel one on top of each other, okay? So, what I would do if I would flatten out my back when I go there, like this, is my discs would be pushed outwards. So, when you bend in your hip, you should preserve the natural curve of your spine, which is the same as when you're standing up. A little bit of lordosis there, a little bit of kifosis for me. Tighten up all the mus muscles around it, back and front, so you co-contract, which means that you stabilize from the front and the back as you go down. Now, how are you gonna learn that? With a stick, with a PVC pipe or with a broomstick. When you take the stick at the back, you should have the head touching the stick, you should have your thoracic spine in between your shoulder blades touching the uh, stick, and then the upper pile part of your sacra should be touching the stick. Now, when you bend, all those three points should be continuously touching the stick. From the moment you lose one point, there for instance, you know that you're not doing fine. This is also not fine, or when I hyperextend, I'm also not doing fine. So this is where I should keep my back the whole time while I'm bending in the hip. Now, my knees should only bend a little bit because when I bend them a little, I have better control over my hip. If I go fully extended, that's gonna be much harder. So bend a little bit. What happens if you bend too much, you take tension of the hamstrings and you wanna stretch the hamstrings out. So this is where you have to try to get and try to get as deep as possible without losing that perfect neutral spine position. Now, then you do exactly the same, but your forehead, your sternum and your pubic bone are touching the stick. And exactly the same, if you wanna have a neutral spine, you should be able to go down, keeping on touching those three points. And then you know you're not hyperextending either. So this is again the neutral spine and neck. All right, once you dominate that 100%, 
you can start thinking of doing loaded Romanian deadlifts. Now, some people are afraid of the word deadlift and if you do it wrong you can get injured with a deadlift because you're working with a decent weight and if your back position is not round, if you, uh, right, if you round your back your disc will get pushed out and you might even end up with a herniated disc. So, first you have to get the technique 100% right, okay? So it's only when you can preserve the natural uh, spine curve where the head position can vary a little bit than when you have the stick at the back but more or less you have the same head position your back is staying completely straight and you're only bending in the hip while you go down then you can start thinking of doing the Romanian deadlifts now it is the best way to increase your hamstring flexibility because it's an active way of stretching it's a slow eccentric because you have to focus on the low part where your body will have to repair the muscle mass afterwards because it's so intense the exercise and it will prepare, uh, repair it in a longer way so the muscle growth will be uh, not only focused on volume but it will also increase the length of the muscle so the technique of the Romanian deadlift with a barbell never use the mixed grip guys yeah always normal grip you're not gonna load the bar so heavy that you can't hold it with a normal grip the idea is to do um, the Romanian deadlift in a high rep range in a slow way so for instance three sets of 15 slow down normal speed up with slow I mean five to eight seconds okay from there the positioning of the feet and then we'll work our way up you put your feet underneath the hips now you grip the floor with your feet which makes that you have an arch and automatically you turn the knees a little bit out then from there you bend the knees just a little bit you bring the chest up but while you bring the chest up you still pull the ribcage towards the hip which gives you a more neutral uh, hip then the shoulder blades go together and they go low you turn the biceps a little bit front which helps you keeping the shoulder blades in their natural place back and low okay from there you start the romanian deadlift co-contracting front and back of your trunk which means pushing the bum back so much that the waist stay the whole time on the heels so your feet have the weight on the heels your toes should be able to wobble you don't have to do that but they shouldn't have the weight on the front of the foot now you cover the bar with your shoulders which means that while your bum goes back your shoulders go more forward and you slide down maintaining that natural curve of the spine now look at my shoulder this shouldn't happen okay you should get the tricep glued to your lats the whole time so you should really pull the shoulder blades back make sure your triceps get stuck to your trunk there now for people with short hamstrings this is it they're not going to get further than there and they will start trembling here and then you have an isometric hold you hold this position for five seconds and then you go up again all right you do that again five days later five training days later you might already get five centimeters lower so this was where you got the first time now you'll already get there all right start trembling and then you go up again okay another repetition all the way up to 15 repetitions now after three weeks you are more or less where you want to be 90 degree angle in the hip while you preserve the natural spine what you should avoid at all time is when you get more or less at the limit of your flexibility of your hamstrings you should avoid pushing it further so far that you lose the lumbar spine curve because this is where you get injured this is a no-go guys this is the lowest you want to get if you can't go lower without rounding your back so guys normally if you do Romanian deadlifts every two days you should be able to get at least one centimeter deeper every two days which means that over the course of a couple of weeks you get from there till there that's a proven method all right now you saw that the whole movement over the entire movement I kept the weight over my shoelaces yeah so it should at no point go in front of my feet because that puts leverage on the lower back that puts a lot of strain on the lower back that's the same with every type of uh, lift in weightlifting the weight should always be over the midfoot and the midfoot is over your shoelaces now if you have 
troubles maintaining the right form, what can help is a Smith machine. Because with a Smith machine, you just stand underneath the bar and you make sure your shoelaces are dark there and the bar can only travel one way, straight up and straight down. So then automatically the bar stays on the right track. It has a disadvantage as well. You don't have to use all those little stabilizer muscles to keep the bar there. So your lift is gonna be a little bit more lazy. But again, if you have troubles keeping the bar there and you're already thinking hard enough about having a straight back, Smith machine might help you in the beginning. Second advantage of the Smith machine is you don't have to start the lift from the bottom. So what you can do is you can just lock uh, the bar at this height, load the bar, then lock the bar out and start going down till the point where you get and go up again. Whereas when you work with a free bar, you would have to start from blocks to not having to pick the bar up from the ground with a round back. All right. Um, and again, don't load the bar too heavy. Make sure that you can do 50 proper form reps um, with that weight without ever putting your back position and your back health in danger. So this was the second part of our stretching is that series. Um, we'll shoot another one about the pecs, another one about the lats and probably some other videos about stretching as well. But if you haven't seen the first video, the theory video about why you should stretch this way, please check it out because it's worth it. We'll link to this video at the end. Now, if you like this video, please hit the like button. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you next time. Bye guys.